Anarchist. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchist, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have coming in from Warsaw, Poland, Maciej Ziokowski, and he's actually got something there called the Bitcoin Embassy. Uh, he does a lot of Bitcoin uh, businesses in Poland. He's hoping to open up a number of ATM machines, I believe 30 or so in the next year. They also do transactions in Bitcoin. He's trying to spread Bitcoin throughout Poland. Really interesting story. And he's also going to be coming to Anarchapoco this February 27th to March 1st, right behind me on the beach. Uh, but the first question we have to ask you, Maciej, is how did you become an anarchist? Hello, hi. Uh, well, it was. Uh, I think I was born. Uh, I was born libertarian. I never. Um, I was never sure what was inside of me, but I always felt that uh, I need the liberty. I I felt that I need to be free. So uh, at first I thought it, I, that I'm weird, but when I started to look on the internet. I saw there, that there's a lot of people who want the liberty. So it wasn't me being weird, but the people who didn't want to be free, they were weird. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a lot of anarchists in Poland? Or you, I guess when you say you're weird, you mean that uh, you're not the regular sort of uh, way that most Polish people are. Is that correct? Yeah, I think uh, most Polish people are uh, like uh, like the the media want them to be. Uh, when if you watch too too much too much television, you you start to think what they want you to think. And I feel uh, even in my close family, sometimes I feel that if if somebody is really believing all uh, all what he see in the in the mainstream media or or what he reads, uh, he doesn't think out of the box. So uh, what, uh, what I believe that almost every uh, Bitcoin user is libertarian because Bitcoin is full, full liberty and uh, when we do all our Bitcoin parties, we have from about 50 people up to even 300 people and the topics are around uh, how to travel, how to store your uh, wealth uh, and how to um, how to make yourself a better person in the libertarian way. That's a good point that many people who have gotten involved in Bitcoin so far have been mostly libertarian or anarchist. And that's actually a good thing in some ways, but also a bad thing because there aren't that many libertarians or anarchists out there. So I, I'm wondering what you think about what it's going to take to get Bitcoin pushed out to a bigger section of the population. Well, I believe it's going to be uh, slow at first, but then if you if you have at least one ATM in every big city, you are you are ready to go. You today, if you want to buy something in bitcoins, you need to uh, go to the restaurant, meet uh, meet a guy, and buy from him. Not for everybody, it looks legitimate. It sometimes it may look shady, so it's always better to use the ATM. This is our role. Uh, our mission is to promote Bitcoin for younger people because they are more into smartphones. If you ask, uh, let's say my mother, she's around 60, she says uh, she doesn't need Bitcoin because everything what she wants is available in uh, Polish Lotus. But if you ask my cousin, who is 10 years old, uh, he says that, yes, you can use Bitcoin because you have a better prices for games for, or for online ebooks, or uh, he wants a subscription video on YouTube. He can pay in Bitcoins. Using bank account uh, on Friday, he needs to wait uh, around three days till Monday for the money to uh, come on the account, right? Yeah, um, in Poland, uh, do they use the euro or are they still using their own currency? I can't remember. Uh, I haven't been have, there in a while. Uh, well, we have Polish Lotte and uh, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty happy with Polish Lotte because uh, still I think our government is uh, is better than the eurozone with the money creation, I think. Right. But the inter the interesting thing is uh, how long has the Zlatte been around? Uh, hasn't it collapsed in the last 10 or 20 years? Well, it uh, it's uh, from uh, 1989, so it's uh, exactly 25 years, the new Polish Lotte. So this is it, 25 <laughs> years for the currency, right? 
But it's interesting because your mo your mother is so happy to use it, but in her lifetime, she's seen a complete currency collapse. Uh, does she ever even think about that or just doesn't think that well, can ever happen again? Well, she saw it twice, actually. <laughs> Three <laughs> so, times the charm. Yeah, and still, I'm really surprised. But uh, what she says, it's uh, when she goes to the store, she wants to buy a bread or some uh, groceries. A Polish lot is uh, what she needs, right? Oh, so yeah. this is the reason. And I have a question for you. When you first hear uh, Poland, what do you think of? What do you think when you hear Poland? Oh, that's a good question. I've been there before. I've been to Warsaw. Um, I don't actually think too much, really. I don't have like all these uh, predefined notions in my head about Poland. Uh, probably the first thing that sort of pops into my mind is, is it was the first place sort of uh, that was attacked during World War II um, and, and how they were so unprepared for that. But other than that, I pierogies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, great pierogies, by the way. I, even better than right. in the Ukraine. <laughs> but I think you need to uh, think uh, Poland, pretty girls. This is what. It is. <laughs> yes, I had a very good time when I was there. Actually, I, I checked into a hotel. I don't know. I have to look up the name of the hotel because it was fabulous, and uh, it's right sort of in near the main square, and it looks like a castle. And um, I think I found it on the internet, and I walked in, and the girl who was very cute, as you were pointing out, uh, told me that all the rooms were booked. And I said, oh, that's too bad. This place looks amazing. And she said, she paused for a second. She said, you know what? We have a special room I can give you. And I was like, okay. And I walked in and it was thousands of square feet with ceilings about 50 feet high. It looked like some sort of emperor's palace room and had this giant, everything in there was crazy. I took some pictures of it. And then uh, in the morning uh, when I woke up, she came in to, to give me a personal wake up call into my room. So that was really great. I really enjoyed my stay in Warsaw. <laughs> okay, perfect, sorry. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> but uh, a lot of stuff going on in Poland. I've been hearing actually more and more about it. Uh, people are saying the economy is doing fairly well. What can you tell us about that? Well, um, what I think it's uh, having uh, Russia and uh, Ukraine as our neighbors, I still think we are doing good. Uh, well, we have uh, a lot of, we are uh, one of the biggest producer of, uh, of apples in the world. And uh, what, uh, what I think is we need to focus uh, on the new, new technology because we don't have uh, too much, uh, uh, we don't have uh, the natural resources in the amount what we, what we could have as, uh, as Norway or uh, some Arab countries. So the new technologies is uh, the, mm, the way where we should go and when I first saw Bitcoin, I thought, okay, my country is not so big, it's about 38 million, and what would happen if every Polish citizen would like to have one Bitcoin? It would be not enough, right? So I started to think, okay, what about if I, uh, if I would be ready to convince at least 10% of Polish people to have one Bitcoin? It's around 4 million people. We, would, we could be one of the most uh, Bitcoin wealthy countries. So this, is, uh, this was one of my ideas why, why to make the Bitcoin embassy. Yeah, so when did you first uh, find out about Bitcoin and when did you start the Bitcoin embassy in Warsaw? Okay, so it was uh, in early uh, 2011. A friend of mine, he wrote a, news uh, he wrote a magazine letter and it was about uh, some crazy digital currency. I was with two of uh, two friends of mine. One of them s said, "Oh, this is some uh, weird money. I don't want this." And the second friend said, "Oh, this could work, but it's too complicated." And I said, "Gentlemen, this is pure money. We need to we need to do something." And not even more, but a week ago, week uh, uh, week. Uh, Week after this, we had our first miner, and it was uh, one of the best decisions in my life to have a miner in 2011. Oh wow, yeah, no, that that would have been a great time to be mining bitcoins <laughs> and holding on to them and, we and not like, losing them. Uh, we were like, oh my gosh, we are producing only half a bitcoin a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, from one computer or something, right? Yeah, yeah. one computer. Yeah, yeah. it's crazy. <laughs> not only bad. Right. 
Yeah, so that, that's great. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. What's your take on Bitcoin right now? It's it hit a high of over a thousand dollars. It's now around four hundred. Uh, what's your take on on where it's currently at? Well, what I believe is 2015 will be the year of surprise. Uh, as I saw today, one of Spanish banks uh, invested in uh, in Bitcoin startup. For me, this is a uh, huge news because uh, Polish banks are still thinking about Bitcoin. They do some research, but they, they never decided to invest a penny. And here, here it comes, a Spanish bank invests. So uh, when I uh, saw Wikipedia taking Bitcoin, then it was PayPal to announce, then Dell, uh, Virgin Galactic, Victoria's Secret, when all those big, uh, big companies said positive on Bitcoin, I thought it's okay. It's only a few months to uh, to skyrocket, and then uh, I started counting a little bit, and we have a Bitcoin halving day on around June 2016. So it's uh, around you know one year and a half uh, to the Bitcoin halving day, and the Bitcoin halving day it means that uh, on every uh, mined block you receive uh, half of uh, Bitcoins which was uh, last time. So last time, and now today we produce uh, 25 Bitcoin on every block. And in 2016, it's going to be 12 and a half. So what well, I believe it's, uh, we are expecting a huge, huge rise in uh, price. Interesting. And uh, just so for people who don't know, uh, we're having an Arcapulco right here on the beach right behind me, February 27th to March 1st. We're actually going to have a number of amazing Bitcoin related people there, including Cody Wilson of Dark Wallet. Uh, Roger Veer has just uh, um, he just confirmed recently he's going to be flying in from Tokyo. Uh, the Bitcoin Jesus, uh, Suzanne Tarkowski Templehoff of BitNation. Uh, we're going to have the entire Mexican Bitcoin community here and a lot of Latin American Bitcoin community as well. And many 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 more so this is we're not calling it a bitcoin conference but there's definitely we're going to have to almost have an entire day uh, for bitcoin and cryptocurrency related or bitcoin 2.0 related technologies and ideas and speakers um it is three days on narcopoco so I'm, I'm actually thinking about that now we might just have a full day on cryptocurrencies uh one of the days of the three or at least most of the day. So it's going to be great. You're going to be coming over here. So we're looking forward to that. So we've got people from all around the world. You're in Poland. Roger Veer's coming from Tokyo. I think Cody Wilson's in London. I don't know why, though. Uh, I wouldn't want to be in London, but uh, he must have his own reasons. Yeah, he must have some reason. Uh, actually, I don't know where he is. He might be in Switzerland now. He's He keeps it pretty under the radar, uh, smartly, and uh, especially with what he does. And uh, so, yeah, it's going to be great. So um, uh, what, if you have any last comments you want to talk about, about Bitcoin or anything else, uh, Poland, anything you like, and then just give us the uh, details of where people can find out more information on the Bitcoin embassy. Well, uh, what I think is that uh, I said a little bit about the price, but what I think the most important in Bitcoin is the community. If the community will be bigger, we'll have better Bitcoin. Uh, let's imagine internet with only two users or with only 10 users. It would be no internet. The internet is people and the Bitcoin is people. So if you ever, uh, if you are in Poland or if you come to, uh, come to be in Warsaw, please visit us in Bitcoin Embassy and let's talk, let's uh, let's have some, pu- have some fun and let's spend some Bitcoins in Warsaw because there are plenty of places to, to spend those. Is there? Is there quite a few places you can uh, use Bitcoin in, in Warsaw? Yeah, actually for today, if you would go tonight, it's around 10 places where you can spend. But my goal is uh, at the end of 2015 to have 100 places and i hope it's it's going to i'm going to make it that's great and i know you're planning on putting in bitcoin atm machines uh which uh, do you have have you picked which ones you want to use well actually a friend of mine from poland he's producing his own because he's an engineer and uh, i i think he's he knows what he's doing so uh, in the early 2015 we will have a uh, few bitcoin atms to to show and to start uh, putting them on the streets of poland that's great we're also trying to get one here in acapulco prior to in acapulco so uh, we're trying to get them out there everywhere we can um, where can people find more information on Bitcoin Embassy or contact you if they're in the area? Well, I'm on uh, Facebook. It's Maciej Zhukowski, and I'm on 
uh, YouTube is satoshi.pl uh, and Bitcoin Embassy. Uh, if you uh, look on, we are on Twitter and we are uh, we try to be everywhere. So if you look for Bitcoin Embassy in Polish, it's Ambassada Bitcoin. Uh, so we are happy to to host everybody uh, in our office. So. Please come by. That's great. And we also have something at the Dollar Vigilante called TDB Groups, which I believe Maciej is a part of. And it's actually a network of people around the world, not necessarily just Bitcoin related, but just liberty minded people around the world, just subscribers actually of the Dollar Vigilante, which are in uh, you know, so many countries around the world. Uh, and so when you're traveling, it's a really great tool. So what I really recommend is for people like us who are freedom minded, if you are going to be going somewhere, uh, get on the TDB groups. You just need to be a basic subscriber for that. It's $15 a month. Uh, we're actually going to set it up as its own product soon too, and really start to promote it. So it's going to be turned into a great travel network. So yeah, definitely check that out. Check out uh, everything uh, that, uh, sorry, how do you say your name again? Machi? I can't, it's Machi Zhukos. Machi, yeah. I'm going to get it right one of these times. It throws me off the spelling. <laughs> well, actually, in English, it's, it's Mathias. Okay, I'll call you Mathias then. That's easier for me. Cool. <laughs> you can call me Jefe, Jeff. <laughs> uh, that, actually, they call me Yef in Mexico. They can't say the J. Uh, so, okay. yeah, that's it. So, I'm looking forward to seeing you here in Anarcapulco at uh, February 27th to March 1st. First, we'll have the links down below. Uh, please like and subscribe to these videos. If you enjoy them, please share. Uh, that's as, as uh, Matthias was uh, letting us know, uh, that's how we can really grow what we're doing is to get more people involved. And the way we do that is by spreading this information and letting people know what's going on. So please like, subscribe, share all down below and uh, come on out to Narcopoco this February 27th to March 1st. And we're going to have an incredible group of people from around the world coming here. And it's going to be a lot of fun as well. So that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. This is Anarchast.